Okay. Yeah, um, okay. Hopefully it won't won't cut off my first part of my speech, but we will see. Right, okay, so it's coming up. 1859, 1859. I'm going to press go live now. And here we go. Hello, ladies and gents, welcome. Welcome to uh, the Psychic Hour with Marcus Starr and Salim Saeed, uh, director of the Mobility Project. Tonight's going to be another fab show and I'm looking forward to having as many calls and as many people come into the show as possible. Okay, so I'm going to start by introducing, of course, uh, Salim Saeed. He is the Managing Director for the British Mobility Project and the Executive Director for the British Most Haunted Project and is the sponsor of the show. And uh, we have actually been starting the Haunted Project and we're going to be doing some ghost tours. So hopefully you're all going to be quite excited by that. Um, Salim, can you tell me more about the ghost tour, please? It's lovely to speak to you, by the way, tonight. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, Phil. Thank you so much for having us on your show, as always. And it's my honour, mate. It's my honour, honestly. Oh, bless you. Thank you. So, yes, the um, the Paranormal Ghost Tours um, start from Monday the 24th of May mm -hmm. and we'll be starting at uh, Coombe Abbey in Coventry. And okay. tickets are currently on sale on our website, uh, thebritishmobilityproject.com. And uh, all people can just call us directly, obviously, to get further information if necessary. Uh, but, yeah, very, very exciting, Phil. I'm not sure if you've ever been on a ghost tour before. I have. I have done one, actually. And it was um, in, in, like, a, a sort of a nuclear bunker over in Essex. And it, that was a very exciting night. I mean, will Marcus, do you know, be using uh, things like the, you know, like the ghosts can talk to you and stuff like that? They had all the gadgets there, um, you know, to detect the ghosts and stuff like that and the spirits. And, and you know, they, you could ask a question and the box would tell you. Uh, I think it was called a spirit box, could tell you what was going on. Maybe this is a good time just to bring in Marcus and ask him about those bits. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Marcus. Uh, hi, how guys. Are you doing yes, I'm absolutely fine. Lovely to be on the show. Hi, everyone. Yes, we're going to be using lots of um, equipment on the Haunting Nights, and I'm really looking forward to them. It, it, it sounds very exciting, the one that you went on. Really exciting. It, it was really good. It was done by the guy who does... Um, Help My House is Haunted, or he's like a paranormal investigator, and that was ah. with Barry Guy. Right, OK. Well, we're going to be doing similar sort of things. You know, mm. all these places are haunted, so, mm. you know, our sort of... Um, our sort of um, way of doing this is, is just to try and get as much activity as we can in the establishments um, with the time that we've got there. So... You know, using different equipment um, and also trying to get in contact with them spirits that once lived there and, and you know, very much still still with us on Earth in these establishments. So very exciting times ahead. And, of course, you know, the tickets are on sale. So, you know, come along, yes. They are on sale now. So, uh, Celine, once again, where can people get the tickets if they'd like to go? Can I ask how much the tickets are, please, as well? Yes, of course. So, if you go to the British Mobility Project dot com, um, you can uh, you can obviously request a callback. So, we can obviously go through the information with with everybody individually. Um, so, like I said, that all they could call us directly from from the website. Um, the tickets are on sale for forty pounds, which is an introductory offer. That's a fantastic um, price, by the way. It is. It's obviously extremely competitive. I mean, we've, we've obviously looked through the market to see, you know, exactly what other other companies are charging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, the cost of, of other tours are extremely high, mm -hmm. but also the quality that, that, you know, that you're going to get from Marcus is going to be, you know, something second to none, something you've never mm -hmm. experienced before. Well, I mean, last week was something I'd never experienced before. 
and it was a very fascinating show that we had. For the people who unfortunately missed out last week, can you just explain a bit about what happened? Because it was um, a very emotional night last week and um, a very touching night as well. Um, could I ask you to, ju to just uh, give us a few words on how you think last week went? I think last week was absolutely fantastic. Um, the, the lovely lady, Sam Hughes, um, came on who had uh, unfortunately lost her son due to suicide. And the, the lovely lady was brave enough to come onto the show and actually have, uh, have a, a live reading with Marcus on air and explain and validate, most importantly, the information that she'd been given. And it's assisted her to, to connect with her son uh, for the last few weeks now, which mm. is something which it, a lot of people can't mm. probably get their head around. But until mm. you actually have that reading mm. with Marcus and have that mediumship uh, sitting with Marcus, you're not going to understand. Mm. Um, but extremely emotional night last week. And the, the feedback that I've had has just been, you know, really, really significant. Mm. Yeah, she was lovely. Good. She was lovely. What a night. It was lovely. And and it's, it's such a pleasure. Um, you know, doing this for the mobility project. It's, it's just so lovely because we're really assisting people in every way that we are, which is lovely. Mm. And, and mm. Marcus, how were you after the reading? How did you feel after the reading? Does it does it ease your soul as well it's, as easing the person that you're giving the it, reading for? It, it does, it does fit. And it really is lovely because, you know, Sam's lovely and it, it's, it's just fantastic because I'm bringing these lovely spirit loved ones through and, mm. and, and it's it's reassuring for them as well because there's possibly things that they didn't or they couldn't say at the time when they was alive and they mm. want to say now in the spirit world. So the, the, you know, there's lots of reasons why it's so lovely, lovely to just reunite to lovely, you know, the spirit world with the physical world. It's just mm. so lovely. It's it, it, yeah, so lovely. And hopefully we're going to be doing that, you know, this evening. So yeah, lovely. In, indeed. Would you? Would anybody mind if I just quickly shout out the telephone number, and uh, if people want to get in touch, I can already see we've. Had had a load of comments tonight which is great and I will read those out in just a second um, but first off of course we're here with the British Mobility Project.com who sponsor the show tonight and the fantastic Marcus Starr psychic medium we've also got the managing director of the British Mobility Project and also the executive director um, for the most haunted, the British most haunted project as well. And as I say, he's a sponsor of the show. We will be doing ghost tours shortly, guys. But the way to get in touch is the British Mobility Project. Dot com. Okay, so I'm going to go through the uh, comments very quick, and we've got Chris Smithhurst first. Hello, Chris. He's always the first online. Such a lovely gent. Good uh -huh. evening to you, Chris. Good evening to you. Uh, Megan Baker. She says, Orbs, I see them around your head. Somehow, I think that's the light glistening off my grey hair, but thank you for that. Um, also, uh, Tim Lloyd, where is Mr. King? I have tried to contact him today. I've not seen him yet. Hopefully he'll be on later. So, uh, Megan Baker says, in a graveyard. And uh, Tommy Roberts, a good friend of mine, hello Tom, says, Barry Guy was the guy, Phil. Thank you for that help there when we were chatting just then. Um, and he also said, help my house is haunted. That's correct. Um, Charlie Leanne Grice is saying hello to Alison Miller and Ellie Rush. Pierre Coudon is giving a big clap and, um, you know, and uh, what an incredible moment from Sam, uh, Charlie Leanne Grice is saying. And Laura Ward is giving us a wave as well. So we're getting lots of nice comments, guys, which is great. Oh, that's lovely. And lots of lovely people coming in. So if you want to have a reading, though, call us 07946. 624307 so that's sort of a mini read uh, but it gives you a little bit of a flavour of what tonight is all about you can also of course ask questions about the psychic world and mediumship um, via Marcus Star through the messenger you can also text us on the same number as the studio once again 07946 624307 okay sorry Marcus were you about to say something then 
Um, no, I'm just going to say, you know, we've got so many lovely venues coming up with the hauntings and the mediumship night. So it's going to be an exciting few months ahead. And, you know, it, it really is um, really worth looking out on the websites and just really sort of analysing where you want to go with um, these evenings because there's going to be one for each area. So keep looking at uh, the things that we're going to be doing over the next few over the next few months. Yeah, really exciting it's, it's times. It's really exciting, especially mm. after all of the COVID problems we've had and all of the well, that's right. lockdowns that's right. and everything. It's been mm. tough, hasn't it? It's been tough to get out there and do other mm. things. And it's so lovely to do a show like this because, you know, you will get people coming through that can't relate to things. You will get people that mm. can relate to things. But it's such a relaxed, lovely show. Mm. And we can just link in with the spirit world and see what messages we get. It's really exciting. I'm really excited to uh, do this. OK, well, I have actually got the first one in uh, from Pierre Coudon, OK, um, and here's Agus, um, let me just find the text, do you know what it's like, it's uh, technology, um, he's saying, can he ask about his divorce and will that finally go through? Mm. Uh, he's saying about okay. marriage as well with our mail and work. Okay, well, thank you. He's listening right yeah, now. That's okay. Yes, what's this gentleman's name again? It, it's Pierre. He's French. Pierre, that's a nice name. Okay, thank you. Right, let's tune into this. As I say, some things you will understand, some things you may not. If you don't understand, it's absolutely fine. It's because they're to come. Um, some things that I say are just predictions, just about to come up or going to come into the near future. Let's have a look. Um, right. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Okay, right. The first thing that I detect um, is your as, as you're going forward in life and you're taking that next phase because this world as we live today, it is like school. We are learning every day. We are going into things every day. And I just feel with yourself, you're moving on. You're moving into that next phase of your life. You're moving forward. But I've got to say... And we can't tell you what to do, so it is your choice. But it's important, I feel, to make the right choices because I do feel that you're going to get asked to go back to somewhere where you've been before. And I do feel that's the marriage or relationship. I feel as if you're going to be asked to go back to somewhere where you've been before. Even meeting up with old grounds, in old in old circumstances, with people that you've met before or been involved before. And the problem is, is if you do that, you are literally what the guides are saying. You're stepping back in time. So in order for you to go forward, it is your choice. But why would you want to go back if going back in the past was so awful for you? Why would you not want to go into the future? So I can't make these decisions for you, but what the guides are saying to you are these are the choices that you're going to have. And I feel you I feel yourself you know that if you did go back into that situation, you'd have to think really carefully because they did make it easy for you. But you know, but obviously how do you know that? I'll leave that with you. Thank you very much for coming through. A lovely text. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you for that. And uh, it's lovely to have you on our show. Um, okay, so, um, okay, we've also been joined by Ronnie Goodbury. Now, I was, um, I, I took some pictures of Ronnie uh, just a little while back for the locals, uh, newspapers and stuff, uh, because he runs a group called uh, Woodley Volunteer for COVID-19, which was a fantastic help to people around the time you know, delivering food parcels and all that sort of stuff to the to, to needy people and vulnerable people and people who couldn't basically get out of their house. Um, so, so yeah. So hi to Ronnie. Anyway, good good evening to you. I just wanted to give him a bit of a, a say hello. Um, but yeah. So that's that that was interesting, guys. Don't forget you can call the show oh seven nine four six six two four three zero seven. If you've got any questions about the paranormal, keep them coming in uh, through the messenger and you can also ask questions about the paranormal uh, or mediumship and psychic um, on the text messages as well. All right. So, Marcus, I mean, how's, 
How's your week been this week? Yes, it's been busy. It's been absolutely fine. Yes, it's been busy. Um, you know, I, I do do a lot of meditation as well as um, obviously being on the front line with all this. So mm. it, it's, it's and anybody listening with regards to wanting to get involved with this or wanting to um, really, really get to grips with the spiritual, the psychic work, it's very important to meditate. You know, meditation for me is, is a daily routine. I do meditation roughly about twice a day if I can. Um, so obviously I'm busy with lots of things, but it, it, it's it's lovely because what you can do is see things from from different angles, different perspectives. And a lot of times when I do these sittings, obviously mediumship being sitting, the readings being the psychic world, and, and just feeling the energy. Um, sorry. See when I do the haunting side of it, so you will see that and you will feel that. And particularly with the mediumship, what they do is they use my voice as the voice box, mm. so they'll just talk through me. And, and sometimes when I'm doing the readings, you you know you'll hear me do that. So even I don't know what the spirit world is saying. Mm. Sometimes it yeah. just it just you know we just feel it and it just comes out. Okay. So interesting. Mm. Yes, so, okay, so we've had a call as well. I think Paul King is on the line. Paul, are you there? Hello, good evening, everybody. Paul, could you, could you put, is your phone on speaker at the second in time, or is it um, plugged into anything? No, I'm plugged into my headphones and mic. Would you plug them out just for a minute, just so we we can hear you a little bit clearer, please, that's all right. Hold on. Hold oh. on. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, but just turn down the, the, the volume in the background, please, mate. That's okay. all right. Otherwise, we get lots of feedback. There we go. Lovely stuff. Okay, so, no, Paul. No, shall I put my headset back on? No, 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 leave it off for a second. I just need to know that um, Marcus and, and Salim are still here. Hello, good evening, gentlemen. Hi, good, good evening. evening. Good stuff. Okay, so Paul, a couple of weeks ago you had a very interesting reading from Marcus Starr, and I, I was just do. wondering if you could validate some of the things that were said in that reading, and is it okay for you, Marcus, as well? Uh, of course, yeah. Okay, so so Paul, c could you tell us some of the stuff that was correct about the reading? Well, it was all correct. I must say, um, my uh, my late sister came through Amanda. Mm. Yeah, um, who was sadly murdered many years ago. Uh, she was murdered in the public toilet. She was. Mm. Uh, that, that was absolutely uh, spot on. Um, she's saying, uh, "Don't worry about your eyes. You're going to be okay. Don't rub your eyes." And, you know, and she said, uh, things will be okay, you know, don't worry, don't worry. And to be quite honest, uh, the gent was spot on. Because mm. I think Marcus also said about the fact that you were waiting for an emergency appointment. Now, that was yes. correct as well, wasn't it? Well, that certainly was, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for an emergency appointment at the uh, Royal Berkshire Hospital uh, for the uh, city cardiologist. Hmm. Mm. I also get a feeling as well um, mm -hmm. that you're going to um, going to be changing things in the house or actually moving home. Have you thought about that at all? Oh, that's absolutely. coming in very yeah. strong spiritually on a psychic level, not not so much on a mediumistic mm -hmm. level, but on a psychic level. It's coming through very strongly with the energy. Mm. Um, you'd, you'd, you'd be bang on there, yeah. You, you would be because, yes. because I, 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 I just feel you, you, it's the environment. It, it's lovely, and you've made it nice in your home, but it's not quite how you want it. And I feel the certain the certain areas of the house where you do need a little bit more comfort, a comfort than what you've got, if that makes sense. Yeah, that certainly does make sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, yes, but I'll, I'll leave that with you because it's all personal. Yeah, I'm sure you don't want anybody to know things, but it, 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 yeah, would you, yeah, just quickly, would you understand there's a little bit of, of mould or a little bit of an area in the house where you feel uncomfortable with? Yes, I'll do, yeah. Yeah. 
God bless you. Well, I'm going to, you know, the, I mean, the reason why, you know, we do these evenings is for the Mobility Project and, and to help mm -hmm. people. Um, and what I'm going to do, because it's, it's not about me, you know, it's, it's about you guys. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send lots of healing to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask this, ask the universe, ask the spirit world to just, just assist you with either that move or that, change have you got anybody because it, it's ruined me a little bit have you got anybody that can help you to decorate or, or do because I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned with where you live with that mold that situation where you are because i feel it really brings you down if that makes sense well you know in the sense of decorating I I, you're strong. I, I, I've, done, I've done that and you know since i had the blood um and, and whatnot you know it's just put me off uh, into further decorating you know uh, the landlord yes. doesn't care less. Mm. That's right. That's what I'm feeling. I, I, I didn't want to say that, and I, I was a little bit concerned about saying that. But, but you know, you know. But yes, that's quite correct. And, and um, it's it's not nice. So no. we need to. Right. Okay. Is it, is there any sort of um, authority you can get involved with? Well, with when I had the, that, you when know, I had the council flood in here. Anything? Well, yeah. When I had the flood in here, not so long ago, I still knows. Yeah. Okay, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I had to actually call the environmental team in uh, from the local council here because the right. landlord here said he was going to do nothing about it. I had running water for two days, I did. Coming down through the ceiling. That's what I'm seeing as a yeah. psychic. That, that's what I'm feeling and seeing yeah. and hearing as a psychic. That's what. Mm. And I'm, I'm sort of getting these sort of clairvoyant visions and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, this is not fair on you. So it, mm. it's... Mm. it's at least you're doing something to get on with this. Now, I keep hearing the name of, of a, a lady's name of Susan as well. Susan. That's strange. That's my uh, my oldest daughter's mother's name, and she's still with us. St still with us. That's right. Um, yeah. Let me just, if you, I hope you don't mind me just, no. uh, because this is unexpected. All this wasn't it? me. No. Hey, 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 sure, the, the, the other guys are okay with this as well. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Let's have a look because no I'm problem, very not. much. Um... You're very much a talented man. A very oh, talented. thank you. Well, there's one thing you can tell it's all live. It was unexpected. Um... And I would really... just like to say something as well, actually. Marcus and myself haven't spoken about Paul's situation whatsoever away from the show. Um, no. I don't think I've actually spoken to you since last week's show, Marcus, have I? No, no, it's, I'm no. I'm just trying to make it clear to people that they, it's not a, you know, some sort of setup. Or no. It's all well, the life. gentleman who, who, who's actually uh, doing the show this evening, uh, until I spoke to the gent concerned, he knew nothing of me, knew nothing of my past. You know, no. uh, no. our, our medium is actually 100% professional in what he's saying. Mm. Well, that God bless you. That's very good of you to say. I mean, I just do it, you know, to help people, to go and, you know, give back to Spirit World as much as I can and to help as much as I can, um, obviously, with, with regards to the mobility project and, and, and so on. Um, if we can give a, quite a lot back, it's it's a wonderful thing to do. But I, I, I'm just wondering why they're talking about... Um, Susan and I'm I'm just sort of um, hearing very very clearly what's going on. I'm just uh, going into that for you now. Um, right, right. Um, would you understand that she's she's struggling a little bit with her breathing? Yes, correct. Yeah, she's right. The, the, oh right, I didn't know that. Okay, she's in hospital, right? Because when she when she when she comes out, the, the the message is she's got to slow down in her life. She's got to relax because she gets very flustered and frustrated. Uh, I'd imagine she would. Yes, she gets very flustered and frustrated. Um, but she she um, she. Yes, yes. What's the connection with the 90s? Is she, nine, is she in the 90s? Uh, 80s she, or 90s? No, she'd be the 80s. 
eighties. That's right. right. Late, okay. Late seventies. Uh, okay, so they're giving me nineties in with regards to yes, long life ahead. I understand, but she's in her current eighties. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also they give me eight percent in the sense of. You know, quite stressful person, eight percent. So she's got to bring that sort of Richter scale down a little bit. I don't see no major issues, but she's got to relax a little bit more. So can you tell her that for me when she comes out? So just, I, I just, I just want her to be, you know, safe with herself. And I feel that message yeah. is quite valuable for you. Okay, yeah. When when I next get to speak to her, you know. God we, bless her. So yeah. When did she come out of hospital? Well, we don't know. She she only went to hospital yesterday. She did. Yeah, and, and I'm being told it was an emergency. Is that right? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. She. she that's right. Light, so my daughter phoned me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. That's right. Yeah, she, yeah. She'll be, again. You see, I, I'm. You see, people come through to us that need assistance the most. I'm going to send the healing to her as well. Can I do that for you, my good friend? Yes, if you wish to. Thank you. I'd love to do that for you. That, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I'll. I'll leave. I'll leave your love with them. Thank you. Paul, is that? Is that thank you very mm. much. Is that okay mm. for thank you at the second? Much. Most definitely, you're very welcome. I can, I can, I can feel it. Mm. Got, yes. Yes, I can. Well, yeah. thank you for the feedback. You know, very, very good of you. Um, um, I'm, yeah. I'm thank I, you. Everything you spoke to me about uh, previously is 100% uh, accurate. What you're saying. You see, you, you see, what they'll do is they'll try and um, the spirits, the guides will try and sort of home in on the, 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 the situations we need to deal with, mm. you know, 100%, and they'll try and help us in, in, mm. in, in, you know, in the physical life where we are. Mm -hmm. And it was just them two elements with the lovely lady obviously going to hospital and obviously your home. I feel um, I'm being given that by the end of July, August time, it, it wouldn't surprise me if your home and your situation in your home is very, very much changed, which is going to give you a, a, a great sort of um, new lease of life, a new feeling of just... You know, things things are just really happy mm. for you because you you know you really want change now mm. with that situation. Yeah, so I think you've been yeah, waiting for yeah, yeah, waiting for so long, haven't you, for yeah. the house? I have, yeah. Since God since bless the you. Blood, since the flooding and whatnot, mm. you know, it hasn't been the same. You know, uh, and with the damp mm. problem in North Winter, where Terrible. I have an employer, the mm. uh, mm. immunity system in here, mm -hmm. you know, literally liters and liters and liters. Was it quite was it quite severe flooding? Was it? Well, it came down from upstairs through the ceiling. It, Terrible. It, it yeah. wiped off the kitchen out. It took the, uh, the ceilings mm. down. Gosh. And, uh, soaked mm -hmm. the walls. Mm. Uh, uh, plug sockets had to be. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh dear. Mm. So this is so this is what the, you see when I do these evenings, or when I sort of ask the spirit world or feel the energy to come forward. Mm. I, you know. I never know what's going on. I, I, I just simply listen to them and then mm -hmm. just go along with it, it all, you see. So, um, so that's no, interesting. It's not bad. It was because I had, I had to call the, uh, the, uh, the environmental team in from, from the local mm -hmm. community. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. that, that was the only reason why the landlord um, uh, yeah. came and uh, switched the water off and everything else and start, started yes, to yeah. do the, the after repairs started yes. on, you know. It, it was so Come tough, on. Paul, wasn't it? It was so Why tough. Uh, uh, and, yeah, yeah. You, mm. you know, you wouldn't believe it in this day and age that these things happen, but they do, oh. and it's very unfortunate when it does. Mm. Um, but you mm. filmed the video, didn't you, Phil? I did, yeah. Yeah, and it was, it, it, it was disgusting, mate. But, mm. unfortunately, mm. Paul... Um, could I call you back uh, maybe a bit later yeah. on after the yeah, show? 
It's yeah, just no that problem. we're getting more and more oh, texts you, and calls. But thank, thank you, you for much, calling indeed. back and just validating all that for us, mate. I really appreciate it. All right. Okay, thank you very and much I'll, indeed, and I'll send, uh, As I say, I'll send some healing. You know, I know what it's like. I've been in trouble myself in the past in my life. I'm not exempt. So mm -hmm. I, I will send as much love to you and your family, particularly the lady that's in hospital. So leave that with me. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank so, you for coming on the show, Paul. That's a pleasure. That's a pleasure. OK, take care. Speak to you later, Phil. Thank Cheers, you. Bye -bye. thank you. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Paul. Thanks, Paul. Bye. So, Bye. so there we go. You, uh, another little validation there, Marcus. How did you feel about that? And also, you <laughs> gave him a little bit more of a reading as well, which... Unbelievable, fantastic. Well, it's a very relaxed show, you know, and yeah. it, it is relaxed, and um, it, 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 it's, just, it's just lovely, and it's so nice... That people it's, come back and give the feedback. It, it, you know, it's really nice, and, and thank you. Lovely. It's really good. Well, mm, now, I hope mm. you don't mind. I'm going to go back to the texts. Um, okay. This is for, for a lovely lady uh, called Charlie Leanne Grice. Now, um, she will be starting a show with us on a Monday night down here on This Is Reading, but she was really looking for some guidance, OK? Uh, she sent me a message here on the text. Um, OK. So she says, you know I've struggled with my mental health. It would be lovely to have some guidance about my life. My marriage is on the rocks. I've moved out and living with mental health issues. I started the COVID group in Prospect Park. And love what it's become. Um, but could do with some help myself. Would you be possibly able to give her um, a psychic prediction of the future, please? OK, Michelle, thank you. Right, so no, let's no, have no, a look. Charlie, let's sorry. Let's heal. So, sorry, sorry, Ch uh, Phil, sorry. Charlie, apologies. Charlie, Ch Charlie so, sorry, um, yeah, it's Charlie. OK, Charlie. Right, let's have a look. I don't know why I got Michelle then. That's interesting, but... Um, right, OK, Charlie, let's, let's have a look. Um, hmm... Mm. Interesting, Charlie. I feel really excited for you and your future over the next three months. I really do. What I would say to you is it's very important to grab, take the opportunities. Opportunities don't come very often. Take them with both hands. Um... I, I do feel with you, and I, and I understand this because, you know, it's happened to me in past times and things like that, so I do understand, not with the spiritual stuff, but generally in my own life, it, it's confidence is not always easy. And what I would say to you is have the confidence to take all of the opportunities that you need to take. Because I just feel that you're going to look at yourself and think, mm, actually, I can't do that, or possibly this is not for me, or possibly that I can't achieve this and I can't do this and this. And so please don't think that way. I, I feel you've got to be really focused, really positive, and say you can do this. And I know you will do it. Um, that's the energy that I'm feeling with you, that there's opportunity just go for it. I do know that also um, at the moment you've got to find yourself, which means having time with yourself is a very important thing at this moment in time. And I feel things like getting involved with new relationships or getting involved with people that maybe Yes, they're friends, or they seem friends, but can't necessarily trust them. Or should we say, you've, you, you know, you've got to vet them or assess them first before you can say that they're actually a really good friend to you. I feel you've got to be a little bit weary of this. So just be a little bit careful of friendships, be a little bit careful, particularly um, in the relationship area, but focus on you. And I feel if you can do this, I feel you're going to go really, really forward. Um, I see a lot of caring coming up for you. I don't know whether there's a, um, a, a new caring position coming up or it's been offered to you or you've got to um, uh, um, look after people, but I do feel that's coming up as well for you. I also feel that um, 
th th there's some lovely things coming up for you. I can see you potentially having an opportunity of doing some radio work or working in the around hospital as well over the, over the next few months. So these things are very important to you. But generally speaking, just keep your eyes open and look after yourself first. I know it's a little bit selfish. I know we shouldn't say that, but you've been through a lot. It's time now to just get yourself back on track and god bless you and i wish you all the luck in the world thank you also i'm going to go back to the messages here uh we got a question for marcus from tommy roberts and he says well he's got a few questions actually but this one in particular are you religious at all marcus are you religious oh that's a good at all? question right okay yes i am yes i do believe um in the energy of the good and the bad um there's there's two forces in this world there's one of um the negative vibration so there's one of the of uh, sh 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 i could say the darker side um demons that sort of area that we won't go too much into um so the dark side and then there's the light side so you've got angels and and so on um now which is the strongest force the the, the strong because they're both as strong as each other which is the strongest force the strongest one is the one that you feed the most so if you feed feed religion in a really good way and you believe in Jesus and you believe in God which is wonderful and lovely to do I do too and you give the love there and you give and you, and you have the responsibility of giving love and, and, and harmony and, and joyful times then that becomes positive and then you go on to that side which is very very spiritually um, on the light that's where you've got the dark and the light. So, so it, it's interesting. They're both as strong as each other. And I'm, I'm constantly, as, as a spiritualist, and this is why this show is lovely, because I can talk about my own life as well. As a spiritualist, I'm, I'm constantly protecting myself and saying, you know, I want to look after myself through the light, through, through, through protection, and just do things in the right way. And it, 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 it's, it's not easy because sometimes in life you come across people that are maybe on the opposite side and you do have to, you know, come into a psychic or, or get involved with this world as the psychic world. Um, it, you know, you can really involve a psychic to actually have a look at the people that are to be trusted or who are not to be trusted. And we can help you with that. But to be honest with you, yes, I am religious and I do believe in religious if it's done in the right way. Anything in life. I mean, I love animals. Um, if you've got two animals and one's, say, one's, um, you know, really vicious, um, you know, and then and then the other animal is really lovely, you can stroke it. Which one would you feed the most if you had to feed the two? You, you, you know, you would feed the lovely animal that is loving and caring, and that's the light. So mm -hmm. we, we could say that's religious. Um, and But if you feed the bad one it, it's going to become more dominant mm. so it, it's important to know that um, and that's how I, that's my take on the religious side of things um, it's it's just simply just two forces working together which force um, you know is the strongest one the one that you feed the most and it, it's, a, it's a good uh, philosophy to have on life as well actually Marcus isn't it it's, uh, it is it is yes you know you, yeah some people look at danger and walk into the danger and some people you know stay on the straight and narrow which is fantastic uh, very very much so Tommy also asks what do you think happens when you die okay interesting question right okay well you know we are in a shell here I'm in a shell we're all in a shell and when we pass over our spirit goes out of the shell and it just goes into and it just emerges into um, the spirit world so our shell is no more but our thoughts our emotions it's almost like if you're asleep at night mm. and your body's no more but your subconscious system is still around you've got your memory links you've got your feelings your thoughts you've got lots of things that you're thinking about energy so that your energy is still is still lingering and that's why when the spirit world um, that's why when the physical world and the ones in the physical world do go over to the spirit world, it, it, it's quite interesting. Often is the case when they pass away very quickly, mm. what tends to happen is 
that they don't actually know that they've actually passed over because it's happened so quickly. Mm. Um, because this, the, the transformation is very quick from the energy on Earth and mm. coming out of your shell to the energy in the spirit world. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it's quite interesting. Mm. Very exciting stuff. Well, Charlie, mm. Leanne Grice, who just gave a reading to just a moment ago, says, literally amazing kiss kiss. So oh, thank you. you. You're doing it all right. You're doing it all right. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, though, I'm going to ask you uh, another question um, from Tommy Roberts, and then I'm going to go back to Charlie very quick on the text. So he says, do you believe energy has to go somewhere when you die, i.e. the spirit world? Yes, yes, it does. But at the same, yes, that yes is quite is quite correct. Um, yes, it does. But also, if, for example, um, and and this is where the Eve, the haunting nights are going to work really well because um, when when there's been a situation of tragedy or or or, or, or great um, you know great trauma that energy is very much still lingering in the premises of where they passed over or the tragedy of what happened around them. So, you know, sometimes when you go into a new house, um, you know, you can feel if you feel good about it or if you feel bad about it. And and, uh, and a lot of the times um, that, that negative energy is of someone that possibly would have saved their own life or would have possibly done something you know awful and, and then that energy is still there so yes if you go over in the right in, in the right way yes your energy has to go over there um, it is a process it is a process mm -hmm. not just over that world there's other worlds as well so it's a process of coming from this world to the world but even so even if we go over in in a right way so possibly you know our sleep in the night just passing over mm -hmm. um, we're still able to contact the relatives if we need to so again that's another energy so for example we pass over and, and we didn't quite say goodbye towards the end mm -hmm. that's again an energy even if we passed over in our sleep we'd still want to say goodbye to that person and sorry love you know I, I just want to say goodbye because you know I, I passed over so quickly we didn't get a chance to say goodbye so mm -hmm. interesting questions and we can answer these um, hopefully that's helped you thank you thank you very much um, that was from Tommy um, Charlie um, Leanne Grice has come back again so this is Charlie again and she says I lost my friend Joe in the terror attack in Forbury, so this this was um, last year um, in the Forbury Gardens. She lost her friend Joe in the Forbury uh, terror attack um, during all of this hell. So I would love to hear from him. Is there any way you could connect them both? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, Phil, thank you. Okay, well, instantly as Phil was reading that text out, um, and please please give us some feedback on this. Um, you know, it's like I say, whenever I do this, you know, there'll be some information that, that you understand. Possibly if you don't know the information, it's because it's coming up for you. Spirit world energy works in a very strange way. But instantly when Phil was giving that information out, I felt as if this, this lovely man had a, a doggy with him. I felt as if the dog went everywhere with him. I felt as if it was very much there. So... Yes, he yes he is coming through a little bit. It's a little bit difficult on a text. Lovely to come through to the show, but he he's it, he's certainly coming through and he's certainly talking about this animal that you loved and cherished. Also, feel as if there's probably a big chain on the animal as well. But either way, um, he 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 wants you to know about that. So I'll give that to you, and uh, thank you for, for 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 coming through. Also, you could you could have possibly heard there a little bit of a speech issue. I don't know whether this man had a speech issue as well in his earthly life but my speech went a little bit a little bit wonky there so um, you, you know you'll probably hear that in my voice which again that's a sign that he's he's, he's wanting to link in and wanting to come through to you um, at some point if you used to talk to me face to face so so yeah thank you so that was Marcus of course and for a fuller reading for anybody who's listening tonight um, you can find him at the British Mobility Project 
www.psychicdoctor.com and of course he is going to be at our psychic tours as well the most haunted psychic tours Salim uh, can I bring you back in just for a moment please if that's all right of course you can, Phil. Lovely stuff. It's lovely to be back with you tonight. Um, so we're very excited about these tours, and it, it's going to be great fun. Marcus is going to be there as our psychic medium, um, and he's going to be walking around to, to haunted venues and stuff like that, which is which is very scary. I've got to say, it's a very scary thought, um, but I, I can't wait. I mean, how do you guys how do you guys feel about it? Good question. I mean, I'm I'm very I'm very excited about it, but at mm. the same time, extremely apprehensive. I've mm. never personally been on mm. um, a ghost tour or any type of paranormal tour or anything like that. Mm. And obviously, you know, trying to organise something like this is is very nerve wracking. But yes. I'm, but for some reason, I just I, I do feel you know really comfortable about it because I've got Marcus there, and obviously Marcus and I have known each other. For, for quite some time mm. and uh, you know Marcus is extremely sort of reassuring mm. um, and you know he just just makes me feel comfortable and relaxed about the whole thing to be honest Phil. Well he's a very relaxed guy and he comes across very well as well which always helps. Um, <laughs> yes how do you feel Marcus because you do yeah, sometimes yeah. still get scared of these things as well don't you when oh, things yes. kick off? I mean, it's, it's just fantastic to support, as I say, the mobility project with yeah. all this. And, and, you know, we're going to be doing the hauntings. And, yes, you're quite right. I, I, I do, you know, eat, you know, all the years I've done this, it still amazes me with some of these evenings what can happen. Anything. That's the great thing about the haunting evenings. I mean, when we do the mediumship evenings, that's 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 a whole different um, different atmosphere. That's going to be beautiful as well because that's bringing loved ones through on these evenings with the mediumship, connecting the two worlds together, and, and really helping people again for the mobility project. But mm. with the hauntings. It's exciting, and no one knows what's going to happen. It, it's it's one of them things that you know we know something's going to happen, but when we don't know, and that can be quite exciting. And mm. it, it's just yeah, you know, jump on board, um, you know, experience it with us, and and you're quite right. You never know what's going to happen. So you know, I may have some new experiences as a psychic medium. There's one sure thing about being a psychic medium. All the years I've done this. You are forever learning in the world of doing this, mm. um, which is fantastic. And I'm sure, mm. I mean, Coombe Abbey, where we're going to, is extremely haunted. It, it, it's got a, it, 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 it's really sort of um, deep in history, um, going back to the Henry the Eighth and so on. So you know, there's lots of things, lots of, um, you know, going to. You know, we're going to really explore this um, venue and see exactly what's going to um, happen there with the energy of the lost souls that still wander mm. around that sort of um, atmosphere of that location. Mm. Very interesting evening. Wow. I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be excellent. And uh, I've got my tickets already. OK, so, guys, uh, we're going to go back to the messages very quick. Um, it says... Should we be scared of death? And that's from Kimmy T. Should we be scared of death? OK, and it's a, it's a very, very good question. And, and thank you for bringing this through. Right, OK, it, it's, it's complicated and complex. But um, the answer to your question is, is no. Um, it's, it's very much... Um, a procedure that we're all going to go through so it's it's scientific that we're all going to go through this um, so do we be scared of this no however if someone does pass away in a circumstance um, and, 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 and we could go to religion with this if we wanted to but you know we'll save that for the show um, you know so say for example if we take our own life it's 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 a little bit of a different situation because what mm. happens is it's, it's it's the same procedure, mm. but when we get over to the spirit world, um, it, it, you you have to because you've left them behind in the way that you've done what you've done. Mm. 
the relatives or the people become victims mm. okay which means that you have to the person that's passed over or took their own life through tragic circumstances, they have to look through, they have to look through the, their, their, their family or the victim's eyes, from their eyes through their eyes. And so that's not to be feared, of course, but there's a lot of guilt with this. There's a lot of feeling, I wish I'd, I wish I hadn't have done this. Why did I do this? I'm seeing my family suffer over many years. Mm. And that's why I always encourage if someone has passed over or, or has mm. took their own life, particularly with a family that's still on earth, although they're suffering, try to wipe the tears and try and get through that energy and have positive energy as quick mm. as you can. Because what happens then is the spirit that's gone over that has took their own life, they become free. Mm. They're no longer feeling guilty and upset be because a lot of people, when they do take their own life um, through through depression or, or through mental health, mm. um, what happens is mm. they discover when they get over there that they've made the completely wrong decision. Mm. And so that suffering is over there. But the, the, the more you release your own suffering and your own pain, and I know it's a process, it can't be done quickly, the more you release and, um, you know, let the spirit free that's mm. to their own life. So there's that aspect of it. But the other aspect of that, of that question, and thank you for bringing it through, it's very valid, is, is, is that, you know, loved ones that have passed away, it, it's quite a nice feeling because what happens is, is you get reunited with your family that have passed over. So, that, so it may be your nan, your granddad, you know, people. I mean, I've got grandparents, you know, that I knew they've passed over now. And I know they're around me, always around me. And it'd be lovely when I go over to, to be reunited with them. And, and I know they will be there with me so it, it, it's it's it, you know it's lovely that we do get reunited and, and and that's how we can do particularly the mediumship um evenings and and, and you know evening of mediumship with marcus style when i start doing those bringing the two worlds together is going to be amazing because then you can really feel them relatives with the validation evidence that we give that they're connecting with yourself in the audience so interesting question thank you for bringing it through Wow, amazing, an amazing answer as well. Um, okay, so uh, Kimmy T's another question. I think I've asked you this already, she may have missed this. Uh, but it says, on the haunted nights, will you have an SLS camera and a polterpod? Which I assume is poltergeist. Yes, pod. we're going to have, yes, yes, we're going to have various equipment, and, and, and there are a couple of things that we will be having. Um, but there's other things we're going to be having as well because, you know, certain things are outdated. We want modern stuff as well. We want as much evidence and validation that there's going to be, mm. you know, poltergeist activity in these places and also that, the, you know, the spirits that are still lingering in their premises are coming through and giving us sheer evidence that they're there. And, and, and that's what, you know, it, on a haunting night, what we're doing is creating, uh, or should I say, disturbing them, them, them spirits that have been there for many years that are probably trying to go to the light and can't do that mm. because of the tragedy of how they passed over. Mm. So, so is something like having a car accident different to a suicide in in the way that the process would work for somebody to get into the, into yes. the spirit realm? Well, it's all it's all the if same. It's not process. your choice compared to your choice. Yes, 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 I understand. yes. It's it's all the same process. However, it, it's there's there's no there's no um, uh, and forgive these words. There's there's no guilt attached to it mm. when you go over. Mm. Um, the, the I mean, there could be a little bit of uh, a guilt attached to it if, say, for example. You know, we, you know, we're getting into the car to go down to the shops, is, and that's where we pass over with that car accident. However, we didn't, um, you know, see our mother or father for, for 12 months. Mm -hmm. There'd probably be a little bit of guilt attached to that when you go over to the spirit world, because 
Often is the case, and, and not for all spirits, but often is the case, and as a medium I, I, I can change these things, but often is the case, when a spirit goes over to the spirit world, they, they can't get in touch, they can't um, touch things, see, you know, they can't do certain things. Some spirits can, some people can't, because you have to create the energy, you see, to, to, to be able to do that. Um, and, and my job is to, is to help them to create that energy, but it's not always easy, particularly without the medium or the psychic. So it, it, it's... It, it's the same process, um, but it's it, it's a little different than suicide. I could, you know, because suicide is is definitely, you know, you know, you was meant to do that. Mm -hmm. So although it's a mistake, so at the same suicide? time you've got guilt. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, the only, and the only way. Well, yeah. Sorry, Marcus. Would you say it's suicide okay. is destiny? Then it's still a destiny of sorts. It, 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 that, yes. It was um, always meant to be. Well, you know, we've all got free will and choice. Yeah. Um, and, and, and one of the things that I do with, with my psychic work is, is often, say, for example, um, there's a choice of, you know, do I have a relationship with this person on the left or have a relationship with this person on the right? Mm -hmm. As a psychic, I can look into the two elements and also, you know, suicide or on earth. I can look into the two uh, situations, but it's it's ultimate to them which decision they they take. Mm. But with any decision you take, there's 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 implications. You know, there's things oh, happen which are, you know. Yeah. That's what Im implications. Uh, that's right. I can't think of the word. Uh, and um, so so oh it, it, it's it's very tricky because. Before you do anything in life, you've got to really, and, and life's a bit like this, and this is why I say it's school, and it's quite similar over there as it is to, it's just a different school. You've really got to think about each day when you wake up, what you're doing, what, you know, what's going to happen if I do A, B, C, and D, and, and it, it's not easy. And, and of course, passing over is very, very similar to this. Um, so, so, so it's, it's not easy, but if you was, to pass over in a car accident and it's funny you should say that because i feel as if there is someone in in your in, in you know someone that you knew that actually had that well would that make sense to you at all mm -hmm. yeah yeah indeed and, and i um, and would you understand that I I feel that it was a complete freak of nature that it happened. I feel there was a child in the back seat, mm. and I feel the child wanted attention. I feel they looked over mm. to the back seat to give them attention, slightly just for a few seconds. The head went back. They looked at the child. The head come back forward, mm. and before they knew it, there was the, there was a head-on collision. Would you understand that? Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, do, do you know what? For a second there, I for, went you know, into me, a just, trance I, I link in because as I'm doing I wasn't, this. I wasn't uh, expecting that. So for a no, second forgive there, me. I went into I, a trance. I, I, That's I just, right. I, yeah, it's okay. Anything can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, I mean mm. yeah, it's uh, all very sad sort of uh, circumstances. Yes, you know? yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you know, it, that caught me off guard. But thank you, Marcus, because that was very interesting. It's okay, um, it's okay. But um, Charlie also, uh, Charlie Leanne Grice says, suicide is a very difficult subject. The pain is horrendous for those who are left. But when yes. someone takes their life, they've taken control of their pain. And until you walk in their shoes of someone suicidal, I feel those who are so troubled aren't left watching their loved ones in pain. Um, that was just just a comment that um, no no that's that, no God God bless who sent who sent that in of course of course and 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 that in itself just mm. sort of illustrates what we're talking about so mm. thank you very much for for, for saying that yeah mm. uh, Tommy Roberts asks have you experienced any guests that have been to a haunting evening like being scratched by a spirit. Um, he says he has experienced something similar, and uh, he he noticed four marks on the girl's back. Oh, let's have a look at that. Right, let's see. Mm. Well, I have uh, not at a venue, but I have done um, with myself. Um, and, and, and what uh, do you yeah. class that as, Marcus? Well, you, I class that as stigmata. I mean, that I had is that in many, many. Yeah. 
yeah. many many years ago that's right um and um it, it was quite interesting because i woke up one morning and and the only way of describing it because it was the first time that i'd had it I, i've had quite a few experiences of my life but it, it was almost like a tattoo and i'm sort of looking in the mirror at this tattoo and i'm thinking well what you know what is that it, 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 you know mm. and it was of a cross mm. and and then the next day just vanished, just completely vanished. Wow. And it's, it's just one of them things that, you know, even today I'll look back and think, well, that's strange. And, and there was a certain amount of strangeness to it even more than that, because at that time in my life, I was actually um, a, a, around um, religion a little bit. I was mm. around, I was, you know, discovering religion a little bit there. Mm. Um, there was a particular priest around me at that time and, and he was about to pass over and I did help him quite a lot with certain things that was going on and interestingly and strangely enough he passed over a few weeks after that happened to me so it's almost like they was sort of guiding me really wow. to sort of illustrate what was to come and 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 these things odd things happen um like this throughout my daily life every day things happen i'm, I'm i mean some psychic mediums would disagree with this but i'm i'm very much i'm very much one for for signs Mm. signs I, I very much believe in signs each day mm. um of, of of what's to come definitely yes mm. wow mm. Mm. fascinating um, mm. it's fascinating absolutely fascinating so this Thank tattoo you. was it actually like a tattoo that you would get from a, a tattoo artist's place you know or was it you know i know it sounds ridiculous or was it a, a cross in, in the shape of a cross as a tattoo? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a good question. Um, the, the only way that I could describe it, and you're quite right, the, the tattoo is a, probably a little bit of an exaggeration because the way you've put that is right, and I can explain it. Um, it's almost like I'm laying down, and you know when you um, have something... Um, how can I put this into words? Um, you... you um, so, 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 say you was to put a cross, mm. and you was to put the cross in in say it was metal, and you was to put the cross in in hot, um, kettled water. Right. Okay. And then, and then you put it on your neck. Mm. It it would leave an implant. Mm. And and what happened was that implant. So it it, it was. I'm describing the right in the right way. It is like a tattoo, but mm. it you know it wasn't. It, it was do, just do an you implant. Know kind of like the way they mark sheep. Would that's you right. It yes, something yeah. Similar but to it that, was a maybe? cross. It was a cross. Mm. That's right. That's right. You've got it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's difficult to put into words, but that's mm. that's quite correct, Phil. That's right. Yes. Mm. I mean, mm. Yeah. Mm. Fascinating. Mm. Fascinating. Okay. Mm. Um, Kimmy T has come back and she's asked, "Have you been in a haunted location and witnessed witnessed someone taking home an attachment?" <laughs> No, that's that's a very very good question. A very very good question indeed. Right. Well, on yes, I have, and it is a very I would say very common thing to happen. Mm. Um, it, it's I'd say it's it, it's pretty much routine if you don't do the following. And, and you know, this is why I get very frustrated with a lot of haunting companies. A lot of mm. you know, they they don't put the protection on the guests that are going on to the haunting night. And that's something that we will be doing. We will be, um, there's gonna be a, a form to sign, um, mm. declaration to, to sign to say, you, you know, certain things can ha happen. But mm. also I'm gonna be doing a lot of healing and also I'm, I'm gonna be protecting the guests that are coming on board. Mm. So they will be looked after, they will be protected. Mm. Um, and I, I, you know, it's important that they know that um so so with the protection that we put on them spiritually and also um physically as well you know the, the, there shouldn't be any attachments going home mm. to 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 the guests that come on the haunting nights mm. but you know if for example you go home and um 
you've delved into certain things on the haunting night and then you start to sort of um, say there's been, I, I don't know, one or two names called out from the medium that's now I've seen myself, you know, come through, you know, make yourself know, make yourself here with us this evening. And then they go home and they sort of try and reenact that in their own home. That protection barrier would go down. And that's how... Um, I mean, I, I did a clearing once many, many years ago um, in a house, respectable family, lovely mm-hmm. people. There were, you know, there was not many issues or problems. And they went on a haunting night. And after the haunting night, they started to get Ouija boards in the house and things like that, which, wow. which to be fair, there's, there's no need. I mean, you, you, you know, you've had the haunting night. It's been a success. Mm. You've seen things, you've felt things, and it's fantastic. Would you ever but recommend the, uh, a Ouija board? Or... Well, and, and under a mediums, uh, a psychic medium that has been mm. doing it, for, for 25, 30 years, mm. I would say go ahead because it's something that the medium can you know, deal with mm. and control. But if we can protect them on the evening of, of the evening of the haunting night, mm. what we can't protect the public with is when they come out of that establishment, mm. out of our hands, what, what they, they do, do after then. Well, 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 that's quite right, and that's probably what the form's going to be about. But um, it, it, it's, but yes, whilst they're there, they're going to be protected. So the answer to that question is, if you, the spirits are not going to go with you when mm. you come out of that establishment. But if you try and bring them back through, they, they're probably going to get through the barriers. Mm. Uh, you know, so the, the procedure of what we've done is, is sort of invalid. Mm. 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 Do, have, you, have you got a most haunted location um, where you've where you've been to before that's been like overly what what you would describe as a, a usual sort of haunted property or or venue or place? Yes, there's there's there quite a few. In what, yeah. Yes, there, there's quite so okay for the, you know, the lovely questions, and I'm really enjoying this. Um, there, there's quite a few places in Wales that I've been okay. to that um, in the past, I mean, Screw It In is very haunted. Um, you know, done a lot of work with Barry John there, uh, you know, and, and that's extremely haunted. And me and Barry done, you know, good nights there. And and, 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 and to be honest with you, you know, there was a lot of activity and uh, it, it was quite phenomenal. So there's different places we've done, but certainly uh, Wales is, 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 is for me, um, You've got some of the hauntedest places in in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, again, the one that's coming up for us, you know, Coombe Abbey. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've I've been in there before and I've done certain things. It is very, it is got a lot of spiritual, um, a, a lot of haunting activity. It really mm-hmm. is. And and one of the things at Coombe Abbey that you'll find, it's interesting that someone said about orbs. You will find, and I'm, and I'm hoping that we can film this on the evening, mm-hmm. a lot of orbs. Because mm. in the past, that establishment has created a lot of orbs. I, I love it. Do you, do you know one of the most mm. unexpected places um, that I've ever been to um, where I found a lot of orbs, and I caught a lot on um, on even my mobile phone camera, um, was actually in London at a Sherlock Holmes um, sort of... Wow. Here's 221B in London. And as we were going around the house... You could, it was like opened up as a museum to the public. You could see the orbs, and it was orbs, it was definitely, definitely orbs, um, going past the camera uh, in different rooms and things like that. It was, it, <clears throat> that was my most sort of, <clears throat> as I say, graphic, what I could see, you know, place to go. And it was in London, it was the Sherlock Holmes, uh, 221B Baker Street. Um, wow. And mm. we just went there, for, you know, to, to see an attraction, to, you know, a bit of a tour in London. And um, it, it was all going on. I thought to myself, why aren't most haunted here? You know what I mean? Because this is... <laughs> yes. It seems like yes. it's got lots of activity, you know. Yes. Um, yes. So that's, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean... Are you looking forward to Coombe Abbey, Phil? I am, I am, but I'm nervous oh, as well. Um, I'm nervous, oh, you'll be so fine. Well, we're I gonna hope look if after you see an attachment on me, you tell me about it. You know what I mean? so I most definitely, it. most definitely. You'll you know. be fine, you'll be fine. I'll throw my um, arms around and just push it away, and hopefully that'll mm, mm. sort it. <laughs> I bet you it doesn't, but there we go. Can, um, can I just jump in there, Phil? Yeah. 
Uh, what Kimmy T mentioned about the attachment, um, yeah. I actually asked Marcus this question as well. It's a very, very good question. And in fact, it's probably a question a lot of people are going to be thinking about and wanting mm -hmm. to ask, to be honest. And um, one bit of advice that I took from, from what Marcus said to me personally, personally on a one-to-one -one level, mm -hmm. was that, um, that when you get home, it's very important to, and I, hopefully Marcus can clarify this, is to um, immediately get in the bath or a shower and wash off the negative sort of vibe mm -hmm. effectively, if, if, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Could you just sort of confirm that, Marcus? Yes, no, 100%. You see, it, it all comes down to 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 energy, and 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 how um, I, I'll try and give an example of this. And, and, and Celine's quite right that it's totally right. Um, to to go in a cold, you know, warm shower or, or, or hot bath, and, and just get rid of that negative energy so important negative energy of that establishment of that person of that situation so important what what is energy okay now now people are probably going to ask well you know what is energy energy mm. is all around us we, you know from the air that we breathe we wake up in the, in the morning energy is all around us how many times do you get people on the phone that are coming through to sell something or to speak mm. to you about something and or, or or you're getting through to them to speak mm. to them about something or, or talk to them about something. And often is the case where, you know, you can sort of hear them, oh, are you okay? You know, yeah, mm. I'm okay. Yeah, you know, and their energy levels are really low. Their energy level, you can tell they've had a really bad day. They're really fed mm. up with things, you know, and their energy levels are really low. Now, how can you change that energy vibration? Because it's all about vibration. You know, go on the phone. Hi, how are you doing? You know, uh, you know, I'm having a great day. Mm. You're you're going to have a great day. You, you know, you you, um, you sound really professional on the phone. You, you know, you're very mm. kind. You're very good. You've, you, you know, and people think sometimes you can be barmy saying this, but it's quite important because what you're doing is you're giving them good vibrations. You're sending them positive energy, mm. and that changes the energy. So, so the, the the reason why I've used that as an example is so people can understand the energy. Um, it, it's it's a bit like a propeller, or should we say, for example. Some people, I mean, I've not got one, but some people have got sort of in the ceilings, haven't they? Um, the um, fans, the fans yeah, for yeah. the summer. Yeah. And the three propellers, but it needs energy. Yes, mm. the electric, it goes it goes, through, it goes through that, but the, the energy and the propellers are going round and round and round. It's creating energy. And then obviously once it stops, that energy stops. That's how the spirit world works. Now, when you create the energy, when you create the energy with a loved one that's passed away, or say, for example, um, you know, a, a, a positive energy atmosphere, what happens is, is then the spirits come through very naturally and very clearly and more professionally because what happens is you've got that positive energy you're creating. I'm often saying to the spirit world, like I would on the call mm. to that person, saying a sales place, you know, spirit this is positive energy. This is a place where you can come through. I'm positive. I know you're going to be positive. Come through. Let's build the energy up. Let's build it up. Let's work together as a team. And that's building, uh, you know, a, a medium's job is to build the energy before they come through. And, and it's an interesting question. I know I'm going off the beat here, but it, it's, it, it comes back to the suicide, comes back to the more negative energy. Of, if there's negative energy of how they've passed away, mm then a medium has to build, it's harder to build the energy up mm. to get it very positive from, from the negative side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hopefully that's sense a bit me. more clearer. Um, mm. so, so going into a bath, if, if we're going into a haunting night, it's all doom and gloom. Bad energy, negative energy. People that have, uh, have been passed away through, through either crime or the, you know. I mean, there's one place called, um, you know, Gallows of Justice. You know, it's a justice system. They used to put them on the table and then just used to just, you know, slaughter them in in that way. And that is negative energy. Mm. So a place like that would be a perfect place to come out of there and yes you're right going to bath cleanse that energy so you, you're getting rid of all that negative energy mm. and bringing positive energy in your life so you can carry on with your daily routines and your daily life um, yes fantastic Marcus can I ask you uh, just a few more questions if possible mate um, 
This one is is from Kimmy T again. She says, have you been abroad on hauntings? But I'm thinking more to myself, when you go away, do you go abroad on holiday? And do you experience ghosts that maybe speak in a different language from yourself? Can that happen? Very, very good question again. Um, it, it's, I, I, I've not been abroad for such a long time. Um, however, um, I, I often talk on the phone to people abroad. I work with people all over the world on the phone or on mm. Skype or whatever that you, you know, in, in whichever way we do it abroad. And 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 yes, most definitely, when the spirit comes through to me, um, either with I, either with a negativity spirit or a positive spirit, either way, when they come through to me, it, it is been known not all the time, but it is been known that the voice the voice box comes in, and I the spirits talk through me and often is the case that i can talk in various languages it doesn't happen all the time if someone mm. if someone said oh marcus can you do this for us now no i couldn't do it because that spirit has you, to you come just through don't know the language so you know that's right but often it's so is, interesting yeah often is you know you might hear this on the ghost night say for example um if um you know, there's any spirits of the Kumabi that are from abroad or, or had a connection abroad, they may come through me in a, di in a different language. So interesting questions again. So yes, it can happen in the right environment. And if, if, if them spirits choose to, I mean, they may have not known English on earth. Um, um, and, and that's another reason why they would come you, through you know, in a different I was, language. What I was thinking was, you know, a few centuries back, because obviously every every country in the world has got ghost or paranormal activity going on somewhere and and at some point um you know obviously you know second language now around the world is probably english but um you know if you went to africa ethiopia somewhere where they generally the language was not spoken of an english person um then they could still talk through you um even though you didn't know their language before if you see what i mean yes yes yeah well it, it, yes yeah. It, yeah it's dialect you see and yeah. um and when um when you know there's different sort of um it gets complicated but basically when a client comes through and i mm. bring their spirit loved one through yeah. often is the case that they'll use my voice box and they'll use um me as a medium to come through me i'm a vessel and what happens is is not just it's a different language but it's also the dialect mm. of of the different parts in that country mm. as well and mm. and the reason why they do that is because that person in the physical world that's listening to what i'm saying mm. from the spirit world and connecting mm. uh, they they would understand that that is from from mm. that that that's from their relative mm. not just over in that country but also um the, the sense that it's a different dialect in a different part of that mm. country so that gives them validation evidence mm. that their relatives there can i ask have you ever uh, talked in tongues before can you talk in tongues or is that more of a, a a, a Christian religious type. I, I believe so. Um, I've I've never talked in tongues myself, um, and I don't know too much about it. But it's an interesting question. I, I I would imagine it's it's it's. Uh, and I'm just surmising here. It's more of a religious type yeah. of thing. That's right. Because, Phil. I yeah, I'm just surmising there. Forgive me. I actually saw it in action once on an Easter weekend oh, in Blackpool, wow. and um, there was groups and groups of people there. Uh, and it was quite scary to see um, because mm. people people were, uh, you know, all they'd have is their hand on their shoulder or something like that. And people were actually dropping down like flies. Wow. And when they got that back up again, though, they, were, they were feeling full of spirit and full of joy and happy. And, and like it was like some big sort of de-stressing session, you know. And there were lots yes. and lots of people there. I've never experienced anything like that before or oh, no. since. It was it was a spectacle. Phenomenal. To see. It really yes. Was. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No. Phenomenal. And and it just makes you sort of you know think about the things that we don't know about. You know. Uh, you know There's whether we're psychic medium or just yeah. There's still mm. so much, Marcus. It's unbelievable. Well, there is, and it's it's like I was saying earlier, Phil. You know, even I mean, I've been doing the mediumship, the psychic, clairvoyance, everything, you know, hauntings, everything mm. with this work for over 25 years, mm. and 
you know, I've got to say that there is, you know, there is still a lot to learn. There is still a lot to do. And what Spirit will do, and, you know, particularly when I do the teaching side of this, I, uh, you know, there's courses that people mm-hmm. can come on and I can help them with this if they feel that they have a, a, um, a, a knowledge or they feel that they feel things and sense things. And it, it can be as easy as that, just feeling something and sensing something. They get in touch with myself. What I can do is, is actually help them more to not only sort of um, in, encourage them to get involved with this more, but also, um, you know, sort of see what they can do. And, um, you know, so for me, for, you know, for everyone, we're still learning. And, and that's the wonderful thing about being on Earth. And I've got to say the next world as well, you know, in the spirit world, you're still forever learning. Uh, yeah. Is there a method that you go through to help people develop their skills then as a teacher? I mean, you know, do you have a a test as such at the end of a, you know, a a, a 10 week course or something? Is there there something that that happens in a specific way? How does it work? Well, yes, there's a procedure. So there's various things we do. Um, But ultimately, I, I can put them through tests and things like that, but ultimately, um, it, it, it's it's up to the spirit world to say, well, yes, you know, we want them on board. We don't, you know, mm. this person we feel has got a future in this. Yeah. So it, it's so it, it's quite complicated because. I don't know unless it, it's, it's not just about the procedure. Yes, there is a procedure for spirit world mm. to work with us, but even after that. They may they may change the mind after through the course of the group. Mm. Um, the, you know, there may be a student that is not sort of getting on really well, and then at the mm. end they just fly through it because spirit have decided just to change change the energy, change things, make sure that they, you know, they're in the group. You know, they go forward. So things happen and change all the time. But it's it's quite an interesting question again. But is ultimately, it, it is up to the spirit world to, to you know to who and 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 does and do the sort of work that we do. Yeah, yeah. Is it kind of like an X factor in the sky then, uh, Marcus? I don't I don't like to put it like that, but you know, I they understand. decide. I well, a little bit. Talent. Yes, you know. Yeah, yes, a little bit because. Um, you know they're the governing bodies up there, and uh, they, you know, they have the choices to make on, on who's there and who's not. So mm. that, it's quite true, yeah. Mm, fantastic stuff. Okay, so we're going to go back to the messages right now. Um, of course, this is um, Phil G. Biz with, of course, Marcus Star, psychic medium, and of course uh, the director of um, uh, the Mobility Project, the managing director of the British Mobility Project and the executive director for the British Most Haunted Project and of course sponsor of this show and that is of course Salim Saeed Um, don't forget we will be doing haunted nights and events um, very very soon so um, go to the website thebritishmobilityproject.com we're getting loads of messages tonight and I'm really enjoying this I hope you and Salim are too uh, Marcus and yes we are yes fantastic Okay, so Ronnie Goodbury has come in with a message saying, why do spirits affect a camera sometimes when certain photos are taken and then not others? Okay, good question. Um, Right, okay. I mean, I'm I'm not very technologically um, switched on, but, you know, the, 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 the... on a spiritual platform, you know, spirits can move around, they can sort of change about sometimes. So um, it, it, it may be wise for him to, to sort of look at the cameras or look at the equipment, see, see if there's any, you know, sort of different sort of... Um, I mean, what we do when we do the hauntings um, is is we do just just check there's no failure in in the technology and the mm. equipment. So, mm. so so you know we're going to make sure that um, there's no interference and you, you know so we can get clear clarity, clear evidence that, that you know if if a chair mm. because I've been on the hauntings a, a, a chair often just moves without no one there. Mm. If if we get footage of that, we've got to validate that and give evidence that that we've not done 
done that. So mm. it, it, it's it, it's important that the that the technology is is really not just up to standards, but also mm. the technology is very much um, mm. cross examined. Mm. You, you know, before we do this. So yeah, mm. but it's an interesting question, okay. um, and uh, yeah, it's a question that pops up a lot. Yes. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Ronnie Goodbury. Okay, so Tommy Rob uh, Roberts has got another story for us. He says, once I was walking home from my local pub and I felt somebody following me in the distance. In the distance, I could see a lady in white walking behind me. He says, I was surprised someone was following me as it was very uh, a very quiet country road. So I waited at the top of the hill for her to pass me and then she disappeared. Yes, I then found out that she'd been seen in the local pub as a ghost in the window. Uh -huh. Right. OK. Right. Yeah. I mean, this, you know, this often happens, you know, he's obviously got a sixth sense. He can feel things, he can sense things. And he would be very much one um, to, to come on a course or, or, or to sort of try and develop spiritually. And yes, if he's feeling that, there's obviously something that he's got there that, you know, he, his, his psychic abilities trigger that off. It's often the case where, um, you know, you know, in the pub, they've passed over, they've collapsed in the pub, maybe mm. ambulances come. Um, possibly it's a situation where they've just, there's been, there's been a road traffic accident, you, you, mm. um, you know, they've been run over. And, you know, so, so all these things, there's different reasons for these things. But I would say with, with that great experience that he had, if he wanted to pursue that and get involved with the psychic work, I... I I would say do that because I just feel that you know it could not be a good everyone. Candidate. Yeah, I mean, not everyone can see, sense, feel. Mm. You've got to remember yeah. that the spirits around us all the time. Yeah. You know, all, all around us all the time, 24 hours. So, for, you know, and um, um, we can't see that. So for him to see th that situation like that, it's phenomenal. So he's obviously mm. got some sort of gift there, and uh, and I would if he can pursue that. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the thing is, if I could just just jump in there quickly, mm -hmm. um, I had this conversation with Marcus as well um, just a few days ago. There's mm -hmm. um, a village in Kent, uh, which is supposed to be one of the most haunted villages in England, mm -hmm. called Pluckley. And a very similar story um, has been told by several of the local residents there mm. of a woman walking um, and then just disappears. Um, so it is quite a familiar sort of story, especially like in these quiet villages and things like that where there's mm. been, you know, a lot of history or, or something similar. Mm. Um, but so perhaps, you know, that could be a location where where we do one of our haunted It would uh, certainly be things. interesting, wouldn't it, Si? It would certainly be mm -hmm. interesting. It would be really good. Um, um, Kim T asks, do you use sage to cleanse at all? Do you use sage to cleanse at all? Yes, and, and again, it's a well, thank you so much to everyone that's coming through. What a lovely lady you are, and and, and, and it really is. I, I, I can sense that spiritualism in you, and and it, it is so important. It is so important to you, you know that, and um, it, it's you know. It's also important to do that on maybe a monthly basis, every two months. It's really good to use this. But ultimately, um, when we sort of develop psychics or mediums, you know, you have guides that attach themselves to you. They're with you for reasons to help you in life. And they can change the energy automatically. But that's another program that we can you know, look into the day, but yes, it's it's a really good um, form of protection, and I would I would advise everyone to do that, particularly when they've come, um, you know, from a haunting night. Um, yes, fantastic. Go ahead with that. Wonderful. Yeah. Lovely, lovely stuff. Okay, guys. Um, Salim, can you can you plug again uh, for the British Mobility Project dot com what we are going to be doing and what we've planned and how people can get involved and get tickets to the haunted events please yes thank you phil so on monday the 24th of may we're holding a paranormal ghost tour at coombe abbey in coventry and during this visit um marcus will be taking um huge amounts of people around in small groups 
um, and giving them a tour of the of the grounds and also the internal building um, and investigating the paranormal activity that will be taking place um, that's re, you know that's constantly being reported by members of the public and people who do visit there over the years uh, based on the history of the actual location and it being one of the most haunted locations in England. Um, the tickets are currently on sale uh, at uh, the British Mobility Project .com. Uh, those tickets are on sale for forty pounds. Uh, that's an introductory offer in order to to show the public exactly how good Marcus really is, so he can, you know, show people, you know, what you know what he can do, what his skills are, um, and also, most importantly, to actually get close and personal with the guy. Obviously, with COVID uh, restrictions, obviously not too mm. close, but mm. <laughs> social distancing and all that, I'm sure uh, he's going to have to be adopted. Mm. But um, yes, uh, thank you, Phil, for that. Yes, so the British Mobility Doc, um, Project dot com. Uh, just uh, just give us a call or email us and somebody will get back to you very quickly. Fantastic. Um, thank you for that, Celine. Um, Megan Baker has asked for a very brief read, please, Marcus. Is that OK? OK, um, yes. Yeah, what's Baker. her name, Phil? Forgive me. Sorry, uh, what's her name? That's okay. It's Megan Baker. Megan, OK. OK, um, thank you, Megan. Right, let's have a look. Let's see what's going on. OK, right. Mm. Right, lovely, lovely lady you are. Um, very much a time at the moment of waiting, hanging around, you know, nothing's happening, nothing's going on. And I, I mean, obviously we've been under lockdown, so everybody's been in the same you know, situation to a degree. But you, you know, it's, it's like I keep saying, you know, this world as we live is, is it really a school. And we're learning every day. And you've had to go through this long process in your life to, um, you know, you've had to learn that, you know, just having time to yourself, you've you, you've planned a lot of things out recently, I feel, in your life. Um, a, a lot of things have been removed without you knowing, you, you know, relationships, work, everything's been removed. So it's not just, you know, the sort of lockdown, it's been everything. And I feel you're sort of on your own in some ways. You've got people around you, yes, you have, but, you know, it's where do I go from here? What's going on in my life? You know, where am I going? And what I'd say to you is that things are about to start to manoeuvre in the right direction for you. I'm, I'm very, very drawn here to new work that's coming in for you. And I feel that is going to change things quite a lot over the next three months for you. Um, you're going to have decisions whether to sort of stay where you are or, or move forward or change direction with that. But I would say go ahead and change because I feel that it will give you that get up and go that you need. I don't feel you're, you, you know, I don't feel you're getting much out of where you are at the moment. And I would say that if you can go in that direction and move forward in that way with your new work, with your new job, I feel it's going to give you a lot of direction. So thank you for coming through. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Um Thank you very much, Megan. That that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, so we've got another question here uh, from Laura Ward, who says, "This is Laura Ward. How would you cleanse with sage? How would you cleanse with sage?" Good question. Well, there's there's various ways of doing it. It's quite straightforward because what I do, I just say a few little prayers, and then what I do, I just put it in a dish or put it in a little bowl or something like that, and then just and and then and then just set it alight a little bit. Okay, so so just you you know and sort of sieve it around a little bit, and then just and then just let all that energy just you know just get around the atmosphere you know let that energy just get around the house. Um, so it's it's quite straightforward, but you know you can buy them from from spiritual shops, you can buy them from certain places, and but you see you're burning that lovely energy, you're bringing that lovely. Um, 
you know that lovely energy to to that home to that atmosphere to to that situation um so that's one where there's various ways of doing it but that's that's the basic way of doing it and yeah but remember to to say a prayer when you do this you know say a prayer and it mm. could be a prayer of of all your wishes of what you want but what it's going to do it's going to protect you and uh, yeah thank you for coming through that's that's a good question definitely mm. for anybody that's not done it before absolutely okay so guys if you want a brief reading from marcus please call us down here in the studio in the next 10 minutes 07946 624 307 that's 07946 624 307 of course keep your text messages coming in ashley collins has asked can you read me but i would really love you to call into the show ashley if you could please 07946 624 307 i've got to say a big thank you to everybody tonight who's been keeping up with their stories and their messages and their questions it's been a fascinating show once again i mean how do, do Marcus and Celine feel about tonight? Are you both happy? Yeah, it, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no. It's been it's been really relaxed tonight, and and it's so lovely because, you know, it, it it's just lovely that people are interacting with us, are asking these questions. You know, mm. we do live in uncertain times, and as I say, we're just here for the mobility project, so we're trying to help that project, and and it's just lovely, you know, that we can do this. There's no pressure. There's no, you know, there's no you've got to do this or do that. So mm. so we could, you know, we could just help as many people as we can and the questions are fantastic it's lovely that people are getting involved and they've got a great interest in this it's lovely i just think it's such a sorry sorry say. that's okay yeah no i was just going to reiterate exactly the same it's great that uh, so many people are getting involved asking the questions because when people ask questions phil it really really shows that there is a, a huge interest and mm. and it's, it's educational as well i mean mm. we all learn something new every day and mm. and uh and i just think this is just fascinating sort of the more the more i do it you know you know working hand in hand with marcus the more fascinated i get from you know from all the information that mm. i learn and discover it's just incredible i just feel from tonight i've learned so much as well though marcus and Salima. i really oh, do fantastic. It, 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 you know what what you can tell people what you can share with people and, you, and some of your stories as well are, are very, very interesting. Uh, and I think people are absolutely enjoying it, which is great. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me go back to the questions just a sec. And what we'll do, if we haven't had a call by about course to 10, we'll wrap the show up. Is that okay, guys? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yes, that's fine, yeah. Okay, lovely stuff. Okay, um, so... Um, this is Can Megan I... Baker, okay? So this could be a tough one, but here we go. Um, Megan Baker again. You gave a little reading for just shortly. What said, why would people, after they die, just hang around haunting places? Um, oh, hello, ladies and gents. We've got a caller into the studio. Just give me a second, please. Here we go. Hello, Phil speaking. Hi, Phil. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, good man. Lo um, lo love a reading, if possible. Okay, here we go. I'll put you through, won't I? Here we go. Okay, so we've got Tommy, um, Marcus Star Psychic Medium. I'm going to pass you over. Um, this is Tommy Roberts on the line right now, and he would like a reading. Tommy, can I just ask you to let us know you're there? Hi, hi, Phil. Hi, Marcus. Um, I'd love a reading, if possible. Um, I, I've sent a few messages in already um, about sort of past experiences, um, etc. Um, and it was be very good. Thank you, you for do. those, Tommy. Thank you for those. Yes. Yeah, so, Marcus, you there? Uh, I am. Yes, we're here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, will, I will let you um, chat away to the lovely Tommy here. Okay. Oh. Hiya, Tommy. Thanks for coming through. Are you enjoying the the show for the Mobility Project? It's been really good, yeah. It's been really interesting, actually. Yeah, yeah. Is there a specific area you want me to focus on with your life, my good friend? Um, not, not really. Um, I haven't had that many sort of um, people pass away that I, I know that are close to me. Um, but uh, it's, it's more of sort of the direction my life's going, really. 
Okay, okay, Let, let's get into the zone. Right, okay, let's... Uh, hmm. Now, it's okay if, if some of the things that you understand and some of the things that you don't understand, um, because some of the things you don't understand is because it's coming up for you, okay, my friends? I'm just going to get into the zone, and then uh, let's see what we can do. Let's have a little look, Tommy, right? Hmm. Mm. Okay, Tommy, interesting path and road that you've got coming ahead of you. All right, there's different things happening, lots of changes coming out over the next three to four months of your life. As I go into things, I know there's an indecision with your work. Plans have got to be made, things have got to be, de things have got to be dealt with, and things have got to be sorted out. But until we get to that phase, you've got to think about what, where you do go with this. Mm. Do you take this path for business? Do you take this this path with your work, which way do you go? I feel you're going to make decisions in this within about three to four weeks. You're on the cusp at the moment, so it's not going to be easy for you to make any decisions until that time. But in saying that, you're a very educate, educated person. So I feel one of the things I feel that you're going to be doing very, very shortly is, is looking at new avenues for new business, looking at new avenues for new prospects of things and situations. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful because obviously some people that come in that want to do business with you, you've got to think whether they you know they're looking after you or not all right and in the yeah. past you know yourself that people have come into your life and they've not been because you're a good person you see because you're you know you've got a good heart and you've got a good sense of um, knowledge with things you give everything all at once you see if you notice that you've you know you've given a lot of love in the past but you've not received anything back as such would you notice that yeah, definitely, definitely. So it's not been easy for you, so is it? Um, it, it it's, it's certainly a difficult situation. So what I'd say is whatever decision you make, just make sure you're making the right one. Have you thought about what you're going to do with your work? I mean, what sort of work do you do, my good friend? Um, so I work in the, the broadcast industry, the TV industry. Right, um, OK. Uh, have you thought about what you're going to do in this? Because I just feel there's big things coming up. Are you focused on things coming up at all for you? Um, yes. Um, Are you so looking at possibilities? Kind of, um, I, I think um, probably new opportunities of what I'm doing. That's right, that's right. And I just feel it's really going to go really well for you, to be honest with you. I really feel comfortable um, as we go into July time, I really do. Um, I know there is spirits sort of around me trying to come forward for you now. Um, but you, you know, you do keep yourself to yourself as well. You know, you do. You're a man that keeps yourself to yourself. You do your own little thing. I don't feel you're a person that likes to be hemmed in too much. Do you understand that? You don't like a lot of yeah. people's energy. You love people, and obviously they love you. But you don't, you know, you tend with yourself. You don't tend to. Um, you're you're a very, um, sh should we say, person that keeps your cards close to your chest, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel you're an open book, if if that makes sense. Now we're talking about books and things like this because I feel that's something you might do over the next six to 12 months. I can see you putting um, notes down on paper and, and really uh, writing a book or getting involved with a novel. Of, has anyone mentioned about this? No, oh, definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. Look I, would out. Not go, no, I would not go near anything. It's, to okay. Do with it's okay. Well, look, yeah, <laughs> we'll look out for this. It may be that they're just giving you notes. You're writing notes down for a new project. All right? Yeah. But either way, I feel... You know, a deep connection with new work, new prospects. Now, what connection do you have abroad at all? Because I can see a business connection abroad as well. Yes, yeah, so I do a lot of work overseas as well. So right, large okay. scale events like the Olympics. Would, would one of them places be... Um, uh, let's have a look at this, because um, I'm, I'm looking at sort of... Um, in fact, they're not giving me the, the country, but I know it's abroad. Um, and I just feel that's going to take off for you as well. To be, I really feel that's going to take off for you as well. Um, now, I'm also, my friend, I feel there's changes in your personal life as well. Mm. And I feel with yourself, I feel you want someone in your life. But again, you're not going to commit yourself into a sense of really putting yourself out there because you you fear people a little bit. Not not in the sense you fear people, but it, it's difficult for you to, to trust them. Do you understand that? 
Yeah. So I don't feel to a degree, I don't feel you, you're you ready for any commitments, uh, anything like that, uh, uh, you know, particularly in relationships. Are you on your own at all? So I can, I can see you. No, no, no. You spend no more. In a, in a, well, I want you to open up. It's OK. I want you to open up more in this relationship because I feel that person in your relationship, I feel they feel that you don't open up enough. So I want you to open up a little bit more to them. Okay. So then I feel they can understand you a little bit more because I feel they want big commitments, I feel they want big things, but I feel sometimes you keep yourself to yourself a little bit. So I can see big things happening on both these fronts of your life over time. Thank you for coming through. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Did, that, did, did any of that make sense to you? Yeah, especially um, how you, you you jumped on the business side of things, mm. um, and and currently I've got a lot of um, you know uh, business things that are uh, polluting my head at the moment with with uh, very 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 busy at work. So mm. um, you you nailed that straight on the head. Mm. Um, and I feel there's a man that that there's a gentleman. Um, I'm not sure he's got glass actually, but there's a gentleman at your work that you you really do feel as if um you you know you you know you really do feel as if you need to say something or you want to say something but you, you because he's a manager or a boss or someone high up you feel like you can't say something but you want to express your emotions on um, what they're saying to him here is try not to express your emotions just yet with this person. I think it's very important just to hold back for now. But he's yeah. frustrating you and he pushes you to the limits, doesn't he? He really does sometimes. Yeah, yeah. No, you've hit that right on the head, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm, mm, yeah, let me just ask... Um, Mm. Who, who would who would Andrew be or Andy or initial A? Um. Look out for this person, okay? And I'm I'm being given this now. Look out for this person coming in of the name of Andrew um, or Anthony, and I feel this person is going to be very good for your business and and good with your work in promoting things going forward. I really feel could be, this. Could be, could be Alan. Um, an Alan? Yes, it, it possibly could be. I know there's an issue A here, and I feel it's very, very good for you. Is this person around now? Yes. Yes. And am I right in saying that you're not sure about them? Because I feel they're good for you. I feel they could be quite good for you. It's almost like there's there's a lot of dynamic, there's a lot of changes going on. And it's almost like you're not sure what the changes are. And I feel you yeah. just got to go with the flow. I feel you've really got to go with the flow of the changes. Because I feel they're good changes for you. I don't feel the negative changes for you. And I also feel as if you're 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 going out more and you're not so closed in going forward, I feel. Have you been quite closed in with your work? Um, I mean, of course, obviously, we've locked down. And yes, so of course. God bless you. I understand. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's why they're giving me you go. Yeah, that's right. So, so I feel quite excited about that. Uh, but, yeah, um, all, uh, yes. You know, things going forward, it's, everything's very busy. All I, I feel it's, I feel it's going to be very, very good for you. I really do. Um Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's just one more thing um, that's coming through for you. Um, hmm. Have you got a... You've got a sister, haven't you? Or is it a brother? Have, yeah. it's, 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 yeah. it's a sister, isn't it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right, there's a message here for your sister. Um... Now, she, it, she, she, she's got a partner, she's married, is that right, I'm being given? That's right, yeah. That's right. Now, there's an important message for her come through. 
Um, I, as I say, I feel very excited about your work and about the prospects of things going forward. I feel very good. But the, the main message I feel, he, he, feel with you, Sam, and it's interesting that you've come through, because sometimes spirit draw people to me, not because necessarily of their own lives um, on a psychic level, but on a mediumistic level, sometimes they draw people to me for the people, the members of the family. And I feel this, the main reason you've come through it is because of your sister. This is quite an important message. I do know that I'm being told that she's not quite settled. She may look settled with a partner or a, or a marriage, but she's not quite settled. And although she is settled, she doesn't feel settled in herself. She may have talked to you, she may not have talked to you, she may talk to you, but I do know that the, the advice from the spiritual world here is quite clear to stay where she is because it's a fairly settled environment. And I just feel if she was to walk away from this or walk away from the situation, I feel that she'd regret it. But obviously, obviously, I don't want to give too much to you because obviously it's private information for you, but obviously come through to us here at the uh, Mobility Project and we can look into that more for you. But I do know, I do know that very shortly she's going to have indecisions about the marriage. And I would advise very strongly to stay in this, but of course the choice is hers. God bless you. All right. Thank you for coming through. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. Is your sister mentioned about anything uh, uh, about her, her not happy? Um, no, no. I mean, I, I don't speak this, to my sister. This is that coming up much. then for you. God bless you. Yeah. I'll leave that with you. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcus, and thank God you, Tommy, you. Thank for, you. <laughs> for coming on tonight as well. It's been lovely to chat to you, um, and I really hope you're okay. And at, and at some point after the show, um, I'll get into contact and just say a quick hello. Um, but I hope uh, you are all right for now. All right. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers for Thank all you for coming time. through. Love, oh, lovely Marcus. gentleman you are. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, Thank, you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Well, I tell you what, it's been a good show. It's been a nice show tonight. Um, we've had lovely. lots of different people come in through uh, the texts and messages and even on the telephone, which has been lovely. Um, and, of course, if you want to get in touch with Marcus and get a reading from Marcus, a fuller reading than you can get here, the best place to go is the British Mobility Project dot com and if you go to the drop down menu you will see a uh, psychic media Marcus star on the page um, but I tell you what Marcus what you can do for people how you can help people it, it, it is absolutely amazing you know and it, it's it blows me away every week um, that we do these like last week with Sam and tonight mm. even when I sort of went into a little trance I almost sent, felt trance like when you're asking me those questions um, yes, and yes. It, was, it was unbelievable like to me I was like oh my god what, what's happened one minute we're chatting yes. away and the next minute it's like mm. yes you know, yes, well, with, uh, with you know, with that gentleman, it was more of a psychic energy sort of reading there, which mm. is a, a complete different reading than the mediumship, because obviously there was there was no mm. one coming through to him mm. from the spirit world. But it, 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 it's lovely, and, and like your project, that's what we're doing here for. So everybody, come on board, come on the events, and let's get things going here. Uh, exciting times ahead. Yeah, so, so Salim, we could just chat a, a little bit more about the um, haunted location that we're going to, the tickets and where they go to book, which is, of course, the BritishMobilityProject.com. But tell us some more, my man. Absolutely. So, obviously, this, uh, this paranormal ghost or it will be it will be very very exciting i mean like i mentioned earlier that we, we are going to we are going to split into separate groups uh we will go into uh different rooms of of the building uh exploring sort of different uh different sort of areas of the building some areas where a lot of people um you know certainly wouldn't feel comfortable in going sort of dark areas of the building because uh, it is a very very old building very historical and uh, and obviously throughout the grounds of uh, uh of the abbey as well coom abbey um mm. we'll we do we do uh sort of you know ask people to you know to, to obviously bring their you know to bring their own um 
a sort of uh, companion or somebody, you know, with them to mm. make them feel obviously a little bit more comfortable because mm. obviously we, we can't predict, you well, know. You just don't know what's going to happen. You exactly. Just don't know. But exactly, but you know there will be um, there will be activity, you know there. Uh, Marcus has uh, has, uh, has already explained to me in detail mm. the sort of things that will be happening there um, <laughs> with the energies and uh, the entities and and the paranormal activity that has been regularly um, uh, witnessed by the public. Mm. It's been in newspapers. Um, I think it was, it was just the Daily Mirror. It was actually advertised in there not so long ago, where there was a, like a transparent lady in the window wow. of uh, of the actual abbey, mm. and um, yeah, it was, it was quite frightening. I think two ladies had actually gone there, sort of uh, to have a look, and um, and they. It was, they, they saw it when they played back the recording on their camera. They actually saw this image wow. um, in the window of of a transparent lady, and um, and it actually comes to light that they were the only people occupying the actual room, and nobody had access to that room. Ooh. So it could so it couldn't have been, you know. I remember the, the, the mystery public. deepens. Indeed, so, it, Salim, the mystery deepens. Um, so exciting! I mean, all of this stuff really <laughs> excites me. Um, my mum, mm. as I say, as I've said before, was a massive believer in the afterlife and in in ghosts, and and she believed she was haunted um, quite a bit growing up, and that she had some sort of psychic connection. Um, and uh, she'd always said to me, you know, you've got to be more intuitive, you know, and things like that. And um, you know, and I've had a few things, but I've never witnessed an actual outline mm. of a ghost or anything like that in, in person, you know. Um, but obviously I've seen orbs and things, which was cool. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, guys, would you mind if just in a minute's time or so we leave it there? But can I just quickly uh, put a few more comments out before we go any further? Um, Ashley Collins, again, has asked me to read her but unfortunately you know i'd prefer to do that over the telephone and we don't really have the time to do that right now um and uh kimmy t again question for salim salim are you quite a spiritual person or have you had any ghostly experiences really good question actually um i never used to be in any way like a spiritual person mm. i just was so busy obviously with business etc mm. never really had time to even consider sort of, you know, any like religion or sort of anything spiritual, to be honest. Um, just not a lot of time for it. Although I've studied sort of all religions and mm. respects, you know, everybody's religion and spiritual mm. views, um, I think that's important. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've, I was actually just talking to Marcus uh, last week about this. There was, um, I've had a couple of sort of experiences, especially quite recently as well, mm. um, uh, whereby... Uh, I, I keep hearing sort of, you know, sort of noises within within the house, and obviously you you kind of get to know um, your house mm. over the years. I mean, I've yeah. lived here for sixteen years wow. uh, in the same house, and you you do sort of know the noises and the little creaks mm. of, of your house, especially if you put your heating on, mm. that type of thing. But um, but yeah, I've heard sort of, you know, s s noises within the house that I haven't um, heard before, mm. and so. I spoke to Marcus about this, um, uh, and he, he was uh, he was absolutely spot on with like the information that he told me. He told me there was a, a lady that used to live here before. He confirmed her age. He confirmed that she died in the house. But then the most amazing part of what he did was. Uh, he said to me that, it, that the lady saying that there's something that belongs to her within uh, within your grounds or yeah. within your house. So mm. I said, I said, really? I said that can't be true, Marcus, because um, I cleared this house mm -hmm. out and gutted this house yeah. and re, you know refurbished mm -hmm. the whole building. Mm. However, he said to me that she's telling him to tell me that mm. it's a hedgehog. Yeah. I said a hedgehog. He said yes. A hedgehog. So I said, oh, hold on a minute. So I opened the, the back door and there was actually, I remember there was a, um, some some sort of garden figures, one of which being a hedgehog. Um, and that's the only thing that actually belonged to the previous owner. 
that she was referring to through Marcus. It was the that was the validation that Marcus gave wow. me personally. Yeah. That was the hedgehog, and I've still got a photo of it now. Fantastic. When when Marcus said a hedgehog, did you kind of think at first like a living hedgehog that yeah, lived in your course. garden, maybe? Of yeah. course. Mm. And then you realise that it's it's actually an ornament that has been exactly. there for a very long time that you haven't noticed. Exactly. And That's um, amazing, isn't it? It's just oh, validation again, which is just incredible. Blows me away. Do you know what I mean? I, I, you know, I just don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it, but it's fantastic. Laura Ward as well. This is going to be the final comment now. She said, brilliant show, guys, with a smiley face and a little kiss. All right, just let you know that. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, and it's... It, uh, once again, guys, Marcus, you've blown me away again. Salim, it's been great to chat. Um, I hope you don't mind. We're going to wrap things up now for tonight. OK. And uh, we are back, though, next Wednesday night, of course, from 8pm, right here on This Is Reading 24-7. Don't forget, make sure you go to the BritishMobilityProject.com and um, book some tickets for our fantastic haunted events that are coming up very soon, as soon as this lovely lockdown is lifted. Um, and call us in the studio next time on 07946 624 307 to be part of the show and get a reading from the lovely Marcus Starr psychic medium here tonight. Um, and uh, if nobody has any objections, we're going to close down for now, but it is the BritishMobilityProject.com where you should go. All right, I've been Phil G., and we've got the lovely Marcus Starr and Salim Saeed, of course, director of the British Mobility Project and managing director of that. And also, of course, the most haunted project as well. Um, so thank you 